Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Art in the Library. As president of the Napa County Library Foundation, I'm happy to have you join us this evening. And very briefly, I'll tell you the foundation oversees money for the library. We have an endowment for the library that we supervise. And every year, make a gift to the library. Next month, we'll be announcing how much it is for this year. The stock market has been up and down, but things are looking good. So we're looking forward to giving the library money. And um, that's it for now. I will turn this back over to Stefana. Thank you so much for being with us this evening. Thank you, Francis. And, um, you know, I'd like to thank you all for joining us. Um, it's nice to have you share your evening with us. I know there are many options right now, you know, on our, uh, on our devices and on our TV. There's a lot of wonderful programs. So the fact that you took time to spend with us is uh, very appreciative. Um, this month, our artist is Yunan Ma. Uh, she is a fiber artist. She uh, comes from, uh, she lives in the San Francisco Bay Area and her beautifully crafted pieces um, are woven with natural fibers selected from top yarn mills around the world. And they're in our library right now. Um, her work is vibrant. The colors, the textures, they shimmer and they move with great excitement. Um, I hope you have a chance to come and see them. Her work will be exhibiting through January, 2021. Now I know it's been a challenging time for us all. However, I'd like to remind you that the library is open and we are open from Monday through Saturday from 10 until 5.30 and on Sundays from 1 to 4.30. So if you've not had a chance to see Yunnan's work, I encourage you to come into the library and do so. Find some time to visit the library and give yourself the opportunity to see some truly exquisite work from a uh, wonderfully talented artist. These, um, these works are beautifully crafted and I want, I want everybody to come see them. It's now my great pleasure to introduce Yunnan Ma. Thank you guys. Hi everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to the talk. Uh, my name is Yunnan Ma and I'm a fiber artist uh, lives in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, so before I start the presentation, I would like to thanks to Napa County Library for having me as the artist of the month in the library. And I, I have always been appreciating the value of libraries and bookstores. And I think it's a place to find knowledge, to get some answers or just a third place to stay at. And I think the value of sharing with the community is really great. So I feel extremely honored to be able to share my work and my story uh, in the space with the community. So let's get started. Uh, during the talk, I will be introducing myself a little bit and how I start the business, what inspired me regularly for art making and the design process. And finally, I'll be showing you the pieces I selected to show in the library. So I was born and grew up in China. Uh, my parents discovered my interest in drawing since I was little. Uh, my dad told me that I was able to draw a complete circle when I was 10 months old. So I guess there is a reason that how I feel uh, very comfortable working with circles now. And so I grew up learning drawings. Uh, I lived in China till 17 years old and I came to the States uh, for high school, college, and graduate school, and all that. Uh, I studied fashion marketing at Savannah College of Art and Design. Uh, so after I graduated from college, I interned at a handbag uh, studio in New York. And because of the internship, uh, I was offered a job at a really famous handbag design company in China. Uh, the company is specialized at its uh, leather weaving techniques. They focus on the development and production of leather weaving handbags for brands like K Spade, Michael Kors, Tory Burch, and Prada, and so on. So this is when I had the chance to get a very close look at the craft, craftsmanship of weaving. And I was really drawn into the beautiful handwork. And I wanted to be able to do that. 
So I decided to quit the job and go to graduate school to evolve uh, my interest in the field. So, uh, so I came back to the States and I went to Academy of Art University and studied knitwear design. Uh, I graduated in 2018 with a full knitwear collection and I was able to go to New York Fashion Week with it. Uh, in the same year, I had a chance to talk about the creative process and design concept at uh, the Apple Store in New York, uh, in, uh, Union Square uh, in San Francisco as part of its series called Today at Apple. So at that point, I knew I love working with fiber. I have a good variety of technique and I have my aesthetics and I I just had a strong wish to deliver not only beautiful, but also storytelling artwork to people. So this is when I decided to establish my fiber art business. And uh, I started art making in the living room of my previous apartment. I just had a lot of yarn stock from my fashion collection and I, I, I would like print out all the inspiring images and put them on the wall and I just started weaving. And I didn't have a very clear direction of what kind of technique I would be using for my artwork, but um, I was just trying all the colors, the shapes, and I was certain about uh, figuring out how to best express my emotions in the art pieces. Um, I get inspired by like many things. It could be a movie, a painting, a book, a memory came up to my mind or like a story from a friend, all these little things. Uh, as now I'm stepping into the third year of uh, art making, and my intention has never changed. I, I just don't want my artwork to be only about uh, beautiful colors or like complicated techniques. I want my work to give people this relaxing, loving, comfortable, almost therapeutic feeling. It's because the inspiration of my work comes from uh, my understanding of love and life. I always enjoy having a moment to think about the memories of my childhood, all those unconditional love, the passion, the carefree, and the nostalgic things. And I want to keep that emotion around me a little longer. So when I'm making a piece, to me, the process is like a private and relaxing dialogue back and forth. And I, I think my customers and my audiences do see this kind of happiness in my work. Uh, so speaking of inspirations, I need to talk about one of the most important influences, a German biologist and illustrator Ernst Haeckel. Uh, when I first started experimenting my weaving pieces, I was just using the fiber as it is. I would just um, cut them into small pieces and use them directly. And one day I saw his illustration book. So what he does is he draws immense scientific detail of microscopic organisms from animals, plants, and insects. Um, and I was really intrigued by its amazing details. And I think it is an appreciation of lives. It just inspired me to be more creative uh, with the material I have on hands and try to be more detailed with the textures in order to better deliver this storytelling experience to my customers. And here are some other uh, inspirations. Uh, Juan Mira is a Spanish painter. So a lot of his drawings have uh, organic shapes and he likes to use very festival color tones. And Overview is a, is a photographic book including uh, satellite imageries of the Earth. So my galaxy collection was inspired a lot from these imageries. And uh, there is Wes Anderson's movie. I just really love the nostalgic color tone, the composition of each screen and the story of his movies. And uh, Lisa Cooper is a Sydney-based flower artist. Her flower arrangement is so creative and she used many unusual elements in her flower design, which I love a lot. And so far uh, I have six main collections and they are Love, Galaxy, Freedom, Newborn, The Show and Landscape. 
uh, love, the pieces are in circle shapes, looking like blossom flowers. Uh, they are inspired by my growing up memories, the, the love, the passion, and all the very deep and rich uh, emotions that I have. So I think love is a very expressive collection and each piece has its very unique emotion in it. And Galaxy is another major collection for me. These pieces are inspired by the appreciation of nature and lives. So instead of the fuzzy edge you see in love, uh, these ones are trimmed with clean edges. And the characteristic of these pieces is the polka dots. This is kind of a texture that I created with the fibers. It's one of a ways to add the detail on the surface. And I think the polka dots can be in different sizes and different color combination. And it's, there's so many possibilities to bring up the mesmerizing and the intricate texture. Uh, Freedom is a collection that I challenge myself to create new shapes instead of like perfect rounded shape. Uh, the, top, the top three you see here is there's 270 degree, 180 degree and 90 degree of a circle. It's like a slice of pie. And the bottom ones are examples of a more organic shape developed from the circles. Uh, these experiments um, inspire me to have a different perspective on the idea of wall arts like in terms of shapes and the interreaction with space. A newborn is a collection of three dimensional sculpture pieces. Uh, the top two are called carousel and the bottom two are called cannoli. So instead of hanging like normal, like two dimensional uh, pieces against the wall, these ones can be looked from different angles and there's no front and back or like a certain way to hang it. And each angle gives you a different kind of beauty and different story. The show are in squares. And I think square is a more rigid frame. It is very much like a photograph, a crop of an, of an object you capture with a camera. Like some are close ups and some are wide angles. And among these, I really like the organic patterns inside of the canvas. I think there's a very interesting contrast between the organic and the geometric, the soft and the rigid. And landscape is one of my most recent designs. It depicts a more real life image. So for this collection, I'm just inspired to capture beautiful moments of life and uh, I didn't draw or look at a reference because normally when I design these pieces, I don't plan ahead of time or I don't like draw before I make them. I just design as I go. So this piece was a challenge for me since I need to be relatively realistic. Um, and I always weave from inside. So like I need to think more along the way, like where I put the mountains and where I stop with the green fiber and change to the blue for the sky. But I think it was really fun process and I really like how it turned out. And I think there are so many other ideas for this collection to be developed. And now let's get into the uh, creative process. I use natural fibers for my art pieces, uh, such as merino wool, alpaca wool, silk, and cotton. And the general techniques I use are knotting and weaving. And for the surface treatment, I normally do trimming and tearing. So I just like to keep a like, good variety of yarn and fiber uh, in my studio. Uh, so like, I'm, like when I need like certain size or like some kind of special texture, I can always find some possibilities. And uh, if you look at the, the picture in the bottom right corner, it's a yarn from a San Francisco local brand called Love Fest Fibers. Uh, I have been working with their yarn since the beginning and the owner, Britt, created these beautiful alpaca wool corn spun yarns. And if you look at the cross cut section, each one has a different interior color from the outside. 
And this design was inspired by my polka dot texture that I used in my work. So I thought this is a pretty amazing thing happened last year that my creativity was able to inspire other makers. And I think it is a, also a way for me to give back to the community. And now I would like you, uh, I would like to show you a video clip of what I do before I actually start weaving. So first I would cut off a section of copper. Uh, so depend on the size and the shape. And I, will, I would measure like the length of the copper that I need to use. And I connect two ends and I solder it. And then I secure it on my working rack and I put the warp yarn around the loom to hold it stable in tension and it's ready to go. So if I already have like a color palette idea, I usually like to put everything out. So I, I have a better understanding of what material I have. And when I get into the weaving mode, it's very easy to reach my material. And this is a video of me making this piece called Refraction. Uh, there are only two materials I used on this piece. That's wool rovings and felted merino wool. And I would like you to enjoy this two minutes video indicates how I manipulated the fibers and create the new texture. So to, to finish the final look, I was uh, organizing the fiber strings to the direction I liked. So the as you can see, each knot, there is a darker shade at the root. The reason I do that is to add a dimension and depth to the piece, as if like the light only passes through the sparse part of it and create a refraction effect. So this video is just show you like how I like to develop the material that I have and change it to uh, the texture that I want to achieve to finish uh, the piece. And in the end, I would like to show you my selections of artwork in the library. I choose 13 pieces from uh, four collections, Love, Galaxy, The Show, and Landscape. Uh, as you can see, the top three pieces have a different uh, edge finish than the bottom four. So for the top three uh, pieces, the, the material I used for the 
edge is the felted merino wool. What's so special of these yarns are they're so thick, so the dyes don't penetrate through inside. So when I break the yarn apart, the unevenness of the color shows on one single string of yarn. And I think it's really pretty. And I just played with the character of the yarn and show off the colors by making them into the flower petals in this technique. And the bottom fours have the spiky fuzzy edges. And these four are hanging at the entrance of the library because I just think they look very cohesive together. And I have two galaxy in oval shapes. And I think these two together look like a clear sky from morning to sunset to midnight. And there is a landscape and three, the shows. So this is a pretty good range of what I make and I love. Uh, it represents my aesthetics and my techniques. And so if you're in the area, you're welcome to uh, visit the library this month to see them in person. And that's it. Thank you very much to join the talk and stay till the end. And here's my Instagram, email, and website. So if you're interested in knowing more about my work or just want to contact with me and ask me any questions, feel free to screenshot the page. And thank you very much. And I'm giving back to Katie. Great, thank you so much, Yunan. I really loved seeing your process. It's so amazing. Um, so now we'll just move right into our Q&A. And if anyone has any questions, uh, please feel free to use either the Q&A button at the bottom or the chat button. Either one works just fine. Um, so you could enter in your questions and then I'll read them off to you, Nan. So we'll just give it a few, a minute for that. Okay. Okay, we got one in the chat. All right, hello, I have a question. I joined late, so I apologize if this was discussed already, but how do you learn this technique? Do you know of others that do this too? Uh, I think uh, this is everything like weaving is self learned. Uh, because I, I studied network design and I studied uh, hand knit crochet, a little bit weaving at school, and a lot of felting at school as well. So I think this area, I'm just, it's pretty easy for me to get on hand uh, on my own. And there are so many fiber artists out there and there are like so many in the Bay Area. I think I, who I know is Megan, she's like, she's in Oakland. And um, I went to one of her show like solo show I think a year ago and I really love her work and I, I cried at her talk because it was so amazing and it was so touching and I just feel very related mm. so yeah there are many fiber artists out there and I think each one of them have different uh, static and style and some I really I can't I can't do myself because I feel like my work uh, there is a sense of organize and discipline in it. And uh, there are, are some artists who does their work very freehand, very organic and very, there's a certain messiness in it that I can't do. And I just, I feel like it's a part of me I feel jealous about it. Yeah. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, I have a question. Do you still create clothing? Actually, uh, like right now I'm working with a, a friend, she's in Paris and she's making her uh, fashion collection right now. And uh, there are two looks uh, I'm working with her. Like I'm making the, the, the yarn, the knitwear uh, piece and she's doing other fabric pieces. So actually, yes, I'm still doing fashion. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thank you. Okay. So unless we have some last minute questions, I think I'll pass it off to, to Stefna.
Thank you, Yunan. I agree with Katie. It was really fun to see, you know, your process and, and we were kind of wondering about it because we have the opportunity to see it every day. And, uh, and, you know, we're kind of scratching our heads. How does she do it? And so this was, this was just wonderful that you were able to, um, to show us. Don't you, don't you think Katie? Yes. I've been really excited for this talk because I've been so curious and other patrons have been too that have come in. I remember when you were putting them up and when you turn them around, you see like a grid. And so that was mm -hmm. fascinating. So I'm really glad that you showed that part of um, the weaving technique. And I actually do have another question. So do you dye your own fiber or purchase in the colors you want? I purchased them. <laughs> I wish I could dye them one day. And uh, like, I think there are multiple ways to dye them. There's uh, the vegetable uh, way. And I've seen some uh, rugs that uh, dyed vegetable and they would fade out, like, you know, like days passing by because like sunset or like of uh, daily wear. And I think that's so amazing. I, I wish that could happen to my art pieces too. So like when a customer owns the piece and they can like they can have their personal experience with it. Yeah. Thank you. All right, Stefna. All right. Well, um, I know there have been a lot of people when they look at them, they just want to, you know, they want to touch them. And uh, you can you can just see it, you know. And and you were wise to to when you hung them to hung to hang them up high, because you know they they do they do invite you to to spend time with them, and uh, and the colors the colors are just so fabulous, and uh, you have a really a, a really great eye for color, and I really appreciate that very much. Thank you so much. Uh huh. Okay, well, I guess we're done with, um, with the um, questions. I, th I thought I saw another one. Oops, um, oh well. Uh, Yunnan's work is available to see here at the library until the end of the month, the end of January. And uh, I really encourage you to uh, come in and see them if you haven't. I encourage you to tell your friends about it because it's a very unique, type of work. Um, we uh, often don't have fiber arts in, in the library. And so we get really excited when we have, uh, when we do have them. And so I want you to spread the word and tell people to come in. Uh, we are open. Our hours have changed since the pandemic. Um, again, Monday through Saturday from 10 until 5.30 and on Sundays from 1 to uh, 4.30. So there's plenty of time to come in and take a look at this wonderful work. Um, I also want to remind you that uh, we meet here on the second Friday of every month for Art in the Library. And next month, we will have a photographer, Christine Hewn. She also is from the Bay Area. She's from San Francisco area. So she will be uh, presenting her work and I hope you join us. So uh, with that, thank you Yunan for this wonderful work and this great presentation. I really appreciate it. And, uh, and Katie for all your help. Thank so, you Yunan. Thank you. Good night everyone. Bye.